Hey YouTube, Doug and Jojo with D&E in the Garage. Today, we're gonna be showing you how to wire up these lights, like I promised. Uh, if you wanna see the video where I made uh, brackets for these, go ahead and hit the card. I think it's gonna be up here. Let's go. Alrighty, now here's where it starts. Uh, any lights you get are gonna have wires coming out of the back that you're gonna need to run back. And what I like to do is connect them together. Now you can see right there is my connection. I have it soldered together, and then I have the uh, heat shrink insulation on top of it. That's the correct way to do it. If you don't solder and then use the heat shrink, uh, you're leaving your joints up open to uh, corrosion and getting disconnected as they move. Now you want to make sure that you're keeping any wires away from stuff like fans. So what I like to do is run one wire, connect them both together. Now what that is right there is a wire nut that I have packed with silicone. I find that's a pretty good way to connect stuff together. After that, you want to take what was two lights running into one wire and run it up into your engine bay. All right, at this point, it's worth noting that this video is not going to be about soldering. It's not going to be about heat shrink. It's not going to be about the importance of finding a good ground. I'm just showing you how to wire this stuff together. All right, I will do other videos at some point. Um, on uh, how to solder, how to make good connections. Uh, this is just about the mechanics of getting a switch wired in. So what we're looking at here is these are the positive and negative wires that are coming up from our lights. This negative, I took immediately to a body ground. All right, you can see I uh, scuffed up the metal right there, got a real good ground, that's done. Now this positive is run safely away from all hot lines, away from all moving pieces under here around here and over to this relay. Now this relay is where all the magic happens, all right? And uh, this is a four post relay. A lot of relays have five posts. There's a fifth one inside. All you need for this technique is a four, but you can use a five and just ignore the, um, the fifth post. Now this diagram on the side right there tells you everything you need to know, but if you're not an electrician, you might have a hard time deciphering what all that means. All of these posts are numbered. I don't know if you can see that. Let's go to the diagram to explain what each post does. Alrighty, I think this is going to be the easiest way to explain this. Each of the four posts on that relay have a different number. 87, 86, 85, and 30. Alright? Now that first post that we were talking about, the one that came from the lights, was 87. So after you run your lights and you have them grounded, you take the positive line and you connect it to the number 87 post. Pretty simple, right? Next one down that we have to take care of is 85. 85 needs to go to a ground. Now, if you noticed on that ground where I put the lights to, there were two wires going there. The second one was the ground wire for number the number 85 post. So 87 is the hot from your lights. 85 is just a ground, all right? A body ground on the vehicle. 86 is the one wire that's gonna be running into your cab. Let's explain for a minute exactly what a relay does and why we're going through all this. All right, the whole point of putting relays in systems like this is to keep dangerous voltage outside of your cabin, outside the cab of your vehicle, all right? Now the high voltage that your lights are gonna need, that your battery is gonna send, is gonna remain isolated inside your engine bay. All a relay is, is a switch that is controlled by another switch. So you're gonna see there's a little toggle switch in the cab of my Jeep behind the firewall, in with me, that's running on very low voltage. We're gonna power that switch, and when that one is powered on, it's gonna power the relay, which is essentially an electromagnet. I'll get into that another day. That's a cool video, though. Uh, all right, once you understand that uh, and why it is necessary, everything gets a little more clear. Let's go back to the diagram. So once again, the positive's coming in from your lights to 87, 85 is your ground, 86 is a wire you're going to have to run from that stationary point on your relay all the way around the back of your firewall into your cab. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Number 30 is a fused line directly to the hot on your battery. All right, this is what's going to power your lights. But you want to put a fuse in this system. There are a lot of different ways to do that. You can go to any tractor supply, Vance Auto O'Reilly's, and buy a fused line, all right? Uh, if you don't know where to find one. Uh, so this is the power to your bat to your relay. This is the ground for your relay. This is the power to your lights. And this is the power from your 
toggle switch that will operate the electromagnet that is your relay. All right, let's go outside back to the Jeep and kind of put faces to all of these names. Alrighty, like I said, this red one is now going to post 87. That's the uh, positive wire coming from, or in this case actually going from the relay to my lights. 85 right here is the body ground for the relay. This black wire comes right here. This guy right here is that same black wire that is uh, on this body ground for the lights. All right. This blue wire is the remote wire, right? Number 86. This is going from right here back along my firewall. That right there is the port that goes from your, your engine bay. And it's coming right here, right? That's where I chose to put this switch inside my vehicle. Now this switch runs on low voltage. It is used to control my relay, which is the switch that will turn my lights on. That remote wire is the link between this switch and that, um, that relay. The other three wires, which we'll get to in a second, all remain in the cab here. All right, this last wire here is number 30. It is the positive to my relay. It is powering my relay. It goes from here over here onto my battery's positive cable and it is fused all right inside this case is a fuse uh, and the purpose of that is to protect the whole system from short circuiting and melting down all right this fuse will pop long before anything goes wrong once you have these four all of these things wired on your relay and you've run your remote wire inside you're done outside the vehicle here's an example of a toggle switch it's got a little LED light on the end that'll tell you when it's on or off, and it has three posts. The first one we're gonna talk about is this middle post right here. All right, it's the accessory. It's what ACC stands for. This is going to be that blue wire that went to number 86 on your relay. That's the power that is going to be sent. Essentially, it's the link between this switch and that relay switch, all right? This next one is a ground, that can go anywhere. You can uh, tap into an existing ground wire, you can ground to some piece of metal under the dash. This last post is the power post, all right? It is your uh, 12 volt power source. Now you can run a line directly from your battery to this, all right? But you're better off picking a circuit that's already in the Jeep and tapping into it. And this is where you get to choose whether or not your circuit is going to be switched or not switched. And what that means is whether these lights can be on when the Jeep is off or not. Alrighty, now I did not want to be able to put these lights on unless the keys were on. All right, my keys are on. When I turn them off, see this light goes off. Outside, the lights outside will go off as well. I chose to make this a switched circuit all right now the alternative and the way i have it in that jeep over there is that i can put those lights on whenever i want the keys do not have to be on but in this jeep the lights the keys have to be on for those lights to be on all righty the thing that decides whether or not your switch will be uh your circuit will be switched or not is what circuit you choose to tap into for that 12 volt power source for your switch what i chose to use was the existing switched circuit that is inside my um my cigarette lighter all right i went behind this piece here and i took the wires that go to this thing and what i did was i cut them and i spliced them and off of the power i ran it up to the power on here. Now, this is only on when the Jeep is on. Now, if you can see the numbers right there, if I go ahead and turn this off, it goes off as well. All right, this one is not switched. This one will stay on all the time. So if I wanted my lights to stay on all the time, I would run the 12 volt power for this switch off of the power from this. Now it's not hard, it sounds a little complicated. Maybe all you really do is cut it, cut the wires in half, now you're left with two. You add a wire for that, now you have three, all right? You splice those together so you're redoing the circuit for this and branching off some power to go up to that. Then there you go, that's all there is to it, you know? Uh, you've got your ground for this switch going somewhere, which I used a piece of metal underneath the dash that I was certain would ground out the whole vehicle. The middle wire is an accessory wire. That runs back through your firewall 
And again, it went in right there. Now there are, uh, you know, every vehicle has a slightly different place, but every vehicle has a port similar to this one where you can uh, sneak wires through your firewall. You can drill it through your firewall, but I don't like doing it because you never know what's back there and what you might hit and where you might come out. All right, so that's it. It's really very simple. All right, let's recap real quick. You take your lights, you run it to 87 on the relay. Then you ground the relay via 85. You power the relay from the battery with a fused line at peg 30. Then you run an accessory line off of 86 into the cab of your vehicle. Once you are inside the vehicle, you run that accessory line from peg 86 to the middle post on your switch or whichever switch uh, peg says uh, accessory. You power that off of an existing circuit. I like to use the cigarette lighters because they're right there. And uh, most vehicles have one that's switched and one that's not, but you can run it off anything. You can even go right into the little fuse box there. Then with the last peg on your switch, you run it to a ground. You hook all that up, make sure your grounds are nice and tight. You should be good to go. All right, guys, that's all on this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment. Uh, I'll get back to you and we'll get this figured out for you. Uh, think of it like color by numbers. It's really not that hard. You know, there's a number for everything and a, and a place for everything to go. And you, you put them together like an erector set and, and you're good to go. Uh, if you found this video useful, if you found it helpful, and I hope you did, by all means, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.